Hey everyone, welcome to uh, the event tonight. I just want to introduce myself uh, real quickly. My name is Jason. I am with Avo Academy, uh, and we are a UX UI design bootcamp. Um, and I will get into all that much later. Uh, before we jump into you know Avo Academy and tech, I just want to welcome you all here for uh, our event on. Um, does your child not want to go to college? So whether you're a parent, uh, a guardian, or whether you're um, somebody who's interested in a different uh, uh, educational route than college, um, this is a great place uh, for us to kind of go over some different paths and resources. And I'm really excited to share this all with you. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So yeah, our topic today is does your child not want to go to college? And what we're going to talk about uh, is how we can empower yourself with knowledge about alternative career paths in the tech field. Uh, we can gain some insights into the ease of breaking into the tech industry. Um, and we can discover some success stories that showcase all those different possibilities outside of that traditional um, uh, educational route that we might think of. So again, whether you're a parent, a guardian, or whether you're somebody who's just unsure about college yourself, this is going to be a great place where we can uh, discover different alternatives. We can break down those myths and we can see the successful possibilities out there uh, for yourself, especially in the tech field. So let's go over the agenda for, uh, for this event. Um, so today we're going to talk about a career in tech, uh, challenges, perceptions, opportunities to alternative paths to success. We'll start with what a career in tech is um, so we can kind of get a better understanding of, um, of the industry as a whole. Then we'll jump into a few myths, right? We've all have these sort of thoughts about what it's like to break into the tech field. So let's see if it's um, if it's as close to uh, to our thoughts as we think it is, or if it might be a little bit um, easier uh, to, to get into the tech field in general. Um, from there, we'll talk about getting started in tech. Uh, we'll talk about the job market, and then can you get started today? So um, that's our agenda. Let's go ahead and jump into the first topic. What is a career in tech? And here we're going to talk about uh, career in tech, how quickly can you join that party? We're going to explore the speed of breaking into the tech field compared to traditional careers. And is the path to innovation quicker than you might think it is? So before we um, get into uh, the, the, the bulk of this, of this section, I just want to provide a quick quote from John Dewey, an amazing philosopher from, um, uh, from Buck Institute. He said, if we teach today as we taught yesterday, we rob our children of tomorrow. And I love this quote because it's it's really framing that mindset for what it means to break into tech, right? When we think about uh, the way that we traditionally learn, the way that we traditionally teach children and what it means to get an education, um, you know, we kind of follow this, this standardized path of going to school, going to high school, graduating high school, potentially going into um a university or going into a trade it's this it's this standardized path that's been going on for for decades if not longer and when we think of tech we need to sort of reshape the way that we teach our children because it's a totally different field and this is how we can kind of compare the two right entry to a traditional career requires some sort of academic requirement again it could be four plus years right if you're thinking college it could be something like four plus years if you're thinking um uh, you know, a trade, it could be a little bit shorter, but there is some sort of academic requirement that 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 you do need to meet to break into a sort of traditional career. From there, once you get that academic requirement, you'll then start that entry level job after you graduate. After you get that entry level job, you'll start climbing that corporate ladder, which could take several years. And you're basically repeating this until you retire. And that's sort of the loop, right? We, we get that academic requirement, we start working, and then we just repeat, repeat, repeat as we try and, and grow ourselves in that field. When we think of tech, let's look at the difference between just the speed of breaking in in general, right? The first step is not really an academic requirement. It's more so to acquire those skills. The job, uh, a job in tech is changing, you know, year over year. So what we focus on, instead of getting an academic requirement or an education, it's more so just about getting skills, which could take as quickly as three to six months. Once you get those skills and you're going to be able to, to get them pretty quickly, you can start uh, an entry-level job really shortly after. 
And then once you get that entry level job, the amazing thing about a career in tech is it's all about continuous growth and continuous learning. Think of the advancements that we've seen over the past decade with technology, be it just an iPhone itself. Think about all the industries that have now incorporated the use of a web app or um, uh, an application or a website just in order to do business with them. That's requiring this advancement in tech that's requiring all of these jobs to sort of upskill and learn as they go. And that's the amazing thing is once you sort of get into this industry, there's never the same thing year over year. It's always about learning and continuing to grow as technology advances and changes. And we're you know seeing that almost uh, daily um, these days. So to kind of keep going on about what a, a role in tech really means, I wanted to quickly introduce a couple of common career paths uh, that people trying to break into the tech field would normally go after. So we're going to really talk about understanding these tech roles uh, and explore the roles that sort of shape that, that digital landscape that we're used to today. So the first role that we can sort of group um, people breaking into the tech field in would be a data analyst. This is something, this is somebody who sort of unlocks the secrets hidden. It's like a detective who's looking for patterns. Another role is a developer. This one is probably the most common that you're um, that you think of when you think of the tech industry. It's somebody who builds that online world. It's about it's about coding and making apps and making websites. It's it's, it's bringing the digital world to life. Um, another role, and this is what Av Academy specializes in, is a UX designer. Designers are the ones who make apps and websites easy and cool to use. Um, it's sort of somebody like who like uh, creating that blueprint for for what developers are going to code. Um, and then the last one is a product manager. This is somebody who really steers the ship. It's like a captain who sort of guides the, le the, the three of these roles, analyst, developer, and designer to create a new product. And these are just the four main categories that we, that we like to categorize uh, the tech field in. So um, the, what's required to get into here is, is not as difficult as you think. We'll go into that in just a minute, but to pro provide some more context behind these roles, we'll introduce them to you looking at Amazon. So let's look at how these four key players kind of contribute to the digital experience of Amazon. So at first, when we look at the data analyst, they're the one who are sort of sifting through that customer data and discovering trends. So if you've ever gone onto that application and you've noticed there's recommended items for you, that's the data analyst job to understand what you have have purchased or what you might be looking at and sort of recommend you different types of, um, of products, especially uh, right there, easy to look at on that web page. The next one is a developer. Again, these are what we normally think of when we look at the tech industry. These are ones who craft that te technical foundation of that app or website and make sure it runs smoothly. They're coding everything. So when you go onto a web page and you click that button, add product to cart or check out, that's all the work of a developer that's making that every interaction with the application sort of come to life. The designer is who focuses on making that experience enjoyable. So if we've probably all been there before, we've gone onto a website or we've opened up an application that is really confusing and really difficult to understand how to use, most of the time that means a designer was not involved in the creation of that app. A designer does not need to learn how to code. They don't really need to know um, too much about um, you know, the technical aspects of, of how things work. They're more so concerned on connecting the user experience with the website or the application. So they're, again, making that blueprint, they're making sure everything's easy to navigate, visually appealing um, and accessible for, for the experience to be um, you know, amazing. And then lastly, that product manager on, um, on this example is, again, guiding the ship. They're having all three of these, these uh, people work together, the data analyst, the developer and the designer to make that app like Amazon or that website like Amazon um, work for you and also an enjoyable experience. So this is how um, we can sort of group these four categories, analysts, developers, designers, product managers come together to bring that digital journey um, to life where every click sort of feels like magic in its own way. And this is just a great way to understand the four, again, the four main categories of, of tech. Um, and now we'll sort of jump into what it looks like to, uh, to break into those, um, those types of roles. So 
Before we do that, we're going to jump into our next section here, which is called breaking down the barriers and building futures in tech. And this is where we're going to really look at the myths that um, breaking down those myths and looking at unlocking that potential, right? Tech skills transform lives. They help you get into this amazing career. But what is stopping us from doing that? And we have these sort of challenges, these precon uh, preconceptions of what it means to break into the tech field. A lot of times we think back to the old days of Microsoft and Apple, and we think you have to be this computer genius to be able to break into the tech field. That is not so true anymore. And the reason is all of these industries now, if you think of almost any industry out there is, is sort of utilizing technology within their business processes. So they want people from all different walks of life to be able to make sure that these products are are aligning with what their users want. And, and that's why these myths of, of tech um, can be challenged and we can see that it's it's not as difficult to break into it as it may have used to be in the past, or it's not as difficult as we think it might be. So we'll leave you with one more quote to sort of shape the mindset here on, on what it means to, to go into uh, this section. John Wooden, amazing basketball coach for UCLA said, do not let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. And again, keep this in mind as we go through the myths of breaking into the tech field. <clears throat> so myth number one is employment outcomes. Tech careers have lower entry barriers, faster entry barriers, and similar employment outcomes than we might have originally thought. This is from a, a survey conducted by Indeed. Indeed is a a job application website, one of the most popular platforms out there to apply to jobs. And they went and took the initiative to interview graduates who came out of tech boot camps versus graduates that came out of a computer science degree from a college or university. And they interviewed hiring managers that were in charge of hiring applicants for that tech role. And here's the, the statistics that they came out with from looking at uh, those um, those interviews with those hiring managers. 72% of graduates who graduated from a boot camp were just as prepared as graduates from a computer science degree, meaning graduates from a, a university or college. 99% of the hiring managers that hired a boot camp graduate said that they would do it again. And 79% of boot camp graduates are employed after just 180 days. So you can see right from 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 here we can break down that myth that if you don't go to college your employment outcomes are going to be hurt breaking into that tech field because it's not true and we have the data to prove that the second myth is that requiring that that tech skill is not easy right it's it's not accessible it's really difficult to to do you have to be this computer genius and that, again, is something that we can break down. Some of the myths that go into um, looking at why requiring those tech skills is so difficult is because there's uncertainty about where to start, right? We don't know where we're supposed to start learning or how we're supposed to start, start learning. And then there's also concerns about the credentials, right? A lot of these tech boot camps that say they're going to teach you what you need to know are online. So we're a little bit concerned about that. And then the cost, what does the cost look like with that? But when we look at the reality, 86% of people who have online credentials believed it helped them achieve those career goals. So right there, we can we can determine that going through a an online boot camp or online course is going to help you get closer to your career goals. And 75% see digital credentials supplementing traditional education. The world has changed. Going to college, spending those four years in college is not as it's not as beneficial as it might have, have been in the past, especially when there's all these educational offerings for tech skills right online that you can do from your house in a very, very quick time frame, especially compared to a traditional degree. So here's another myth that we can break down. Requiring tech skills is accessible. It's easier than you can possibly imagine. And we're going to show you how you can do that as we go along this presentation. And then the results... This is comparing, again, boot camp graduates to college graduates. Boot camps will offer faster, more cost-effective route to a lucrative tech career with graduates achieving comparable earnings to those with a traditional computer science degree. So let's take a look at boot camp grads and college grads, right? First item that we're going to look at is duration. 
College graduates are going to be anywhere from two to four years for just that bachelor's degree, associate's or bachelor's degree, whereas a boot camp graduate is going to be just three to six months to learn that skill set. The cost of college could be $35,000, but that could also be just for one year, depending on where you go, whereas the average cost for, cost for boot camps is somewhere around 13000 and there's much there's there's boot camps that are on the much lower end as well that could be as as low as three thousand dollars. What we know is that there's quicker entry into the workforce makes boot camps a smart choice for those seeking efficient and impactful careers in technology, because again, it's not about that traditional education. It's about learning the skills. And if we go that boot camp route. We know that hiring managers from looking at those previous myths are interested in hiring bootcamp graduates. Now, if we look at that return on investment, it's going to be 32% higher, right? The average salary is going to be somewhere uh, around $80,000. So just from the first year of employment, you're getting a $57,000 um return on investment just from offsetting that bootcamp cost where college could take you years and years and years to, to, to pay back. So these are just the results. There's many studies out there um, that that verify this, that college graduates and bootcamp graduates are sort of on an even playing field. And the positive thing about uh, bootcamp grads is it's cheaper and so much quicker for entry into the tech field. So now that we've sort of talked about what a career in tech is and we've explored some of those myths, we've broken down those myths to understand um, the, the accessibility to get these skills and the entry into the workforce, let's talk about what it's like to learn the foundations and start a career. So to learn the foundations, you're really thinking about it as building your tech toolkit, right? If you were acquiring tools for a job around the house, right? If you need to build a piece of furniture or do some, some home improvement project, you're gonna go out to that hardware store and you're gonna buy numerous tools and numerous supplies. They're gonna help you get that job done. Tech, looking at tech is the same thing. It's all about gathering tools or learning the tools that are gonna help you understand information, solve problems, create those enjoyable experiences and make those smarter decisions for the future and no degrees are needed. It's just a willingness to learn. So the same way that you'd be learning how to use tools and, and, and work on your home is the same thing, same, um, same knowledge you can apply to learning the tech industry. And there's a few different ways to do that. Uh, I just wanted to share the options that can help you learn um, the, the, the skills needed for the digital landscape. The first one is, is self-directed. This is you know really good for, for somebody who likes to learn independently and has good self-discipline. The problem with self-directed learning or some, some considerations to look out for is it does require very strong organizational skills and it also lacks a little bit of guidance. So if you were looking to go that self-directed route, maybe just to understand a little bit more about those careers, YouTube's a great place to go. Coursera and Udemy also have a few different courses that you can um, take a look at. If you wanted a little bit more guidance, mentorship could be a really good route to sort of learn those foundations to get into tech. This is really good if a student values that guidance from experienced professionals. The considerations on mentorship, though, is that there's limited availability um, and also prior knowledge might be required. So sometimes a mentor doesn't have the ability to teach those foundations and they might be only willing to work with you if you've sort of gotten that foundational knowledge and they can kind of help shape you and advance your skill set a little bit more. So these are just some things to look out for. Um, if you did want to look at some mentors, though, LinkedIn and ADP list are another great place to go. Um, another option are online courses. So online courses are offered, uh, you know, they could be anywhere from a few hours to uh, 24 hours to 48 hours, they vary in length, but they really go into um, what is needed to learn the foundational skills of those, especially those four career paths that we we're looking at before, right? The data analyst, developer, designer, and product manager. This is really good for students who like that structured learning because that course is going to be broken down in a structured way to sort of teach you that information. Um, the considerations, though, is it can be difficult for a new learner 
to align those courses with their career goals, right? They might have something in mind and then you might go and purchase a course for that student and realize halfway through that the course kind of took a turn and it's not really really aligning with what you're trying to do for your career. Um, but if you were interested in exploring those career goals or career court online courses, you can take a look at Udacity, Coursera, Skillshare, Pluralsight, uh, just to name a few. The last option for exploring these different paths to learning those foundational skills are boot camps. Uh, boot camps like Avo Academy, where we teach UX design. There's other boot camps out there like Coding jo Dojo that teaches development. Um, there's all different types of boot camps, and there's many options. This is great for students that seek that quick, hands on path to becoming job ready. Um, it is very intensive. And it does require some research and time commitment. The reason we say that about boot camps is because you are committing yourself to learning in a, in a, in a time frame. And there are other um, usually mentors and things like that that are working with you through those programs. So you do need to be committed um, and willing to work with it. It's more so like traditional schooling, but it's usually offered online and you're able to kind of do it on your own uh, on your own time as long as you're following a schedule. So the cool thing about boot camps is it does combine all three of those previous things before. It can be self-directed because while you are working within a time frame and a schedule, you can sort of direct your own time, right? You might be able to uh, hold a job or multiple jobs and still be doing this in, in the off time. I know at Ab Academy, we offer um, our programs to invest as little as six to, to 10 hours a week. Um, we also have mentorship and most boot camps do this as well. They offer some form of mentorship to sort of guide the students through. And then all of the courses are usually online as well. So boot camps are a great option to really get that quick hands on learning and to learn the skills that you need to break into that first entry level tech job. It's going to help you get the skills you need. They constantly update the curriculums to make sure they're always offering the most uh, up to date material. And that's the good thing. The sure thing about boot camps is it's going to give you the best option to sort of break in. And now, after you sort of learn those basics, whether you go through any of those paths, the next thing to do is sort of move into applying that real world knowledge, right? It's sort of like reading a cooking recipe. If you're going to cook a new recipe for the first time, you're going to read all the steps. You might understand it. But then the now what you have to do is apply it and you might do that recipe two, three, four, five times until you really get it down right. And that's what this again, the same thing is going to apply in the tech industry is you get that foundational knowledge. And next thing you need to do is sort of practice and learn through projects and build out what's called a portfolio, which we'll talk about later on. So there are a few different paths again, to these uh, applying those real world skills. So once you gain those foundational skills, here's a few different things that you can consider um, or talk to your children about uh, is freelancing. This is where you kind of get, uh, you can go on websites and things like that and, and offer your services to somebody who might need help building a website or might need help designing a website, things like that, that might not have a high budget. So it's great for somebody who just learned to sort of practice. The things to look out for, though, is you really need strong self-awareness on this. You don't want to enter yourself into a freelancing agreement if you don't have the skills um, needed to complete that project. There's also things called open source projects, which are like different community platforms out there where anybody that's a developer, designer can go and just work on an, on a, on an open project. The problem with those is um, you might spend a couple hours helping out with that open source project only to be um, to log on the next day and see all of your work erased, right? If you're not sort of uh, up to date or, or you may have done something a little bit wrong, then your work can get removed without little structure or, or um, communication as to why. So it can be difficult there as well. Hackathons are pretty cool. These are very fun events where uh, a bunch of tech people kind of go and um, split themselves up into teams and work on a on a problem to solve. It's sometimes in a competition. They could offer them in a 24 hour window or a 48 hour window where you got to work really fast on this project with different team members. Uh, again, some things with with the hackathons. They're very fast paced. So if you're not up to date with your skills, sometimes you might be doing more watching than actually doing. 
Bootcamp client projects, again, I'm going to advocate a little bit more on the bootcamp side here. It's really great because it's a much more structured setting. This is where students that go through a bootcamp and, and um, usually go through together will work with a team of other students on projects for real companies. At Av Academy, we have a, a, a secondary program after foundations called Career Jumpstart, where our graduates will team up. We partner with small businesses, nonprofits to design their websites and applications for them. And our students can work on um, a few of these projects. So they'll work on two or three projects, applying those foundational skills. And the best thing is they're also receiving that mentorship support. So if there's any trouble that you run into um, while you're on these projects, you have those mentors there to sort of help and guide you. Uh, the thing is with these bootcamp client projects, and a lot of them work in a similar way, you have to be considerate of the time of not just your team, but also your clients. You're working in um, a, a, a project duration schedule. You have team members that you're working with and your clients are also depending on this as well. So you do need to make sure you're, you're able to commit yourself to it, but it is a fantastic way to sort of learn and apply your skills. Um, and here's sort of how we can sort of showcase that. So at Avocademy, our, um, we know that employers value that practical experience. So we help build that portfolio and tell that compelling story of your journey and your capabilities. So what we'll, what we'll do for a student is we'll set them up on various projects that are gonna diversify their portfolio, which is what employers will go to alongside a resume, for example, to look at, at, at their skills and their, and their um, you know, projects they've worked on. We'll help you with team dynamics. So we'll give you the ability to work on multiple projects uh, to show that you can work well with others. And then we have that expert guidance at all times. So you're going to receive that valuable mentorship that's going to help you work through any project challenges and sort of improve your learning, right? You're going to learn from experts as you're applying your skills. And we have found that our students that follow our processes 95% of them land a job working from Av Academy teams, building their portfolios and learning from those experts. And the average time to land a job is in just 122 days. So in just under a year, you can learn the foundations, work on some real life projects and find that entry level job. It's pretty amazing how quickly you can sort of get yourself into a tech role. I just want to pause really quick. We're right there at our final uh, topic. But before we do that, I would love any feedback um, on uh, on this presentation. So if you scan this QR code here, it will take you to a website where you can um, give us your thoughts, give us your feedback, tell us what you might be interested in, uh, or uh, you know, or things you you might like to learn a little bit more about. We definitely value your your feedback and. For your time, we will offer a $250 coupon as well. So if you go ahead and, and share some thoughts and feedback, you'll get a quick coupon for $250 off our foundations course. Um, and we'll show you that in just a minute. So scan this QR code. Um, please share your thoughts and feedback. We really appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and, and continue on here. So one of our last sections we'll talk about, and this is one of the biggest um, considerations when we're looking at breaking into the tech field, is there a job market, right? This is something that I know as parents with with um, with kids who might not want to go to college um, or even somebody who is just unsure about going to college but wants to get into tech, what's that going to mean for the job market? And I'm here to tell you that the, the, it's so much easier to launch your career than it might have than you might have previously imagined, right? We've talked about learning those foundations and getting that real world experience. That's really all you need to finding a job. You saw that statistic from Av Academy. 95% of our students that follow our processes, learn the foundations, apply their, um, their skills on projects, are, uh, are getting jobs in average time of 122 days. So really there's a three-step process you need to do after you've learned the foundations and worked on your projects, it's about building a portfolio. And I'll show you an example of what that looks like. It's basically a collection of the projects you've worked on and the skills that you've gained and showcases what you've learned. Interview practice at Av Academy, we do offer, um, we have mentors that not only help on the design side, but we also have mentorship on that, that interview side. So you can kind of gain your confidence because these are new skills that you sort of need to explain for yourself, right? If you've spent, 
uh, some time working in a different industry, you might know, right? Let's say you came from healthcare, maybe a nurse assistant or, uh, um, uh, you know, physical therapy, something along those lines. If you were going to interview for, for that kind of job, you know it, you understand it. Tech is something a little bit new to you. You know, you've only gone six months through this boot camp and worked on these projects. Let our mentors help you understand how to how to interview better. And then from there, you will go ahead and find that that job of yours that matches exactly what you want to do. And the amazing thing about the job market today in tech is it extends beyond those software companies. It doesn't just mean getting a job with Apple or Google or Facebook or Microsoft or Amazon. Tech careers extend well beyond software companies. If you love cars, this is where your passion can kind of meet work, right? If you love cars, you can work with them in tech. There's companies um, you know, out there that are building tech products, uh, applications, websites to help car enthusiasts get closer to um, you know, different types, types of cars, whether it's uh, renting them or trying them out, whatever it might be, it's there. And that's the amazing thing is tech is extended to almost every single industry that if you have experience with something or interest in something, you can shape your portfolio and your resume to really tell that story of why you're interested in it. And those companies are going to want you as an advantage, right? If you're interested in um, or have experience in the industry that they're selling their products, it's a no brainer to pick you because you're going to be that person who can connect the enthusiasts of who they're trying to sell to, to the technology as well. So you're sort of bridging together the enthusiasts and the tech and making it an enjoyable experience. And that's the amazing thing about the job market today. It's constantly growing and it's constantly evolving because all products are utilizing uh, the tech space. So, Here's a quick success story that I'll share with you, and I'll, I'll go ahead and show you um, what a portfolio sort of looks like, as, especially how Ab Academy does it. But this is a story of Andrew. He was in construction management for most of his life, and he decided that he wanted to change. He wanted more autonomy over his schedule, and he came to Ab Academy, and we were able to set him up, and now he works for PepsiCo. You might know them as the brand Pepsi, but they do much more than that, and he is now a product designer for them. And uh, he was able to do that all through, you know, just quickly going through our program, easily changing careers and uh, establishing himself um, within the tech field. So let me go ahead and show you what that kind of looks like. Um, so you can see here a couple of our success stories. We know we've had students change from many different industries. But what will happen when you go through our program is you'll start with the foundations and then if you uh, want to do career jumpstart, you'll work on those projects. And this is what it's going to look like. You're going to have a portfolio that looks something like this. Um, you can see each of these are the projects that they've worked on. So if you go and click on one, we can click on one here. This was uh, uh, she was our sole designer working for a, a business to consumer travel app to help young families travel easier. This is something that she did through our program and you can see exactly how we help you build it. So she went and created this amazing looking application um, and this is what her portfolio looks like. So as you go through foundations, you'll end with, yeah, of course, absolutely. Thank you Haruka for, for bringing that up. After you go through foundations, you will end with one project in your portfolio. Um, and you'll probably see that like right here, right? You can see sole designer. This is uh, sort of like a foundations project where you pick a problem, something that, you know, interests you. Uh, you might be a hobby. It might be, um, you know, something just that you notice in, in every day that, that you have identified a problem and we're going to help you research that problem, right? So this was um, Marin's project in our foundations program. It took about 10 weeks. And what your portfolio does is walks you through, um, you know, every step of, of how you built that, right? So this is something, uh, it, it looks like a travel app. She built something that uh, helps uh, uh, families travel. So you can see she designed the application to fit into, um, you know, a, a screen, like if you're using an iPhone, and these are some of these, um, this is what we call uh, high fidelity screens of a prototype, high fi screens of a prototype. Um, and then what the portfolio does is walks through every step of the process on how you got there, right? From your research phase, so you can see discovery, uh, talking about interviewing people, 
mapping out their insights, taking it into ideation, right? You, you, you want things to, to adhere to what your users want. So you start ideating based on what your users want and start thinking of different ideas, uh, user stories, framing things into their, into their mindset, you know, mapping things out, right? How it would work on an application. And then you get into something like this, where you start going through like blueprints almost of what a design can look like, you know, and then you can see you start perfecting it and tailoring it as it goes along, right? This is more of, uh, you know, sketch related. It's very, um, you know, very uh, low, low fidelity at the moment. And then as you start to progress through the design process, you start to make it a little bit more official. And then eventually, you know, add some, you know, visuals to it and you come out with something looking like this. And this is a, a actual product that you get to test on people and see how it works and make any changes, you know, depending on your test. So this is what you would learn in something like foundations. And then when you work in career jumpstart, you'll see the difference here. You now have a portfolio. You can see UX UI designer. This one said uh, soul designer. And then this one showcases on a team of five. And this was for uh, a company socially immersed. She worked for on her uh, career jumpstart program. And you can see the overview. It's a platform that encourages local humanitarian participation. And you could see that she was a designer on a team of five, the tools, the, the duration of the project. And then you could see even, um, What's really cool about this in the portfolio is you get to talk about that client kickoff, right? So you get to showcase that you were able to meet with the client. You talk to them about what, um, what vision they had in mind, what goals that they were trying to achieve. Did they conduct any research previously? You know, are there any brands that they're inspired by? You kind of gain this information from the client in the beginning, and then you start going through the rest of that project. And then you can see, um, you can kind of tell that story in your portfolio here. And as you keep going through the same thing as uh, what we were, we we're showcasing before with the, with the solo work, you're, you're showcasing it on a team. And then eventually you get to, you know, the, these designs where you showcase what you designed. And then one thing that you'll notice here, which is really cool. It's called dev handoff. This is where you actually take, oops, sorry about that. Let me find that again. This is where you actually take your designs and hand it off to uh, the development team and, and showcase how you would annotate what you designed and annotate what you found through your research as a team to actually be developed into a real life product. So um, this again is just another example of what you would do in Career Jumpstart, right? That foundational um, project is gonna be something of your own. And then in Career Jumpstart, you're gonna have multiple projects where you're working on teams. And then from there, you can start applying to jobs, updating your resume, updating your portfolio, getting that interview practice and landing that job in tech in under a year. It's definitely, definitely doable. So, um, you know, I hope uh, this, you know, helps answer any questions that you might've had when it comes to, you know, App Academy, UX design, or even just tech in general. What we would love for you guys to do is schedule a career advisor call. Um, this is uh, totally um, you know, an open call for you to, to join and discuss any thoughts or questions that you might have. And our career advisors will be more than happy to talk you through it, right? Even if you're not interested in UX UI design, right? If you had something else in mind that you might have been thinking about, but just want to understand, you know, what a boot camp is like, call them. And even, you know, you never know, UX design might even speak to you a little bit more than, than you think it would. It's a great choice for uh, transitioning into tech. It's one of the top um, you know, jobs out there, one of the most popular jobs out there, uh, constantly getting rated in the top five on, you know, Indeed's, uh, you know, hiring lists and things like that. So this might be something for you if it's something that you weren't previously considering, but our career advisors will be able to talk you through um, our programs, talk you through what a, what a, you know, what a day in and day out looks like in the program and what day in and day out looks like within, you know, the job itself. You can also find us on, um, you know, Instagram, TikTok, uh, look at our LinkedIn, go to our website. You can email us at info at Academy. We're more than happy to talk to you and answer any questions. Um, to schedule that call, you can scan this QR code here. Or what I can also do if you're on your phones is I can share a link in the chat that will um, take you to that page. So feel free to use um, this link. And again, if you are interested in schedule call, maybe interested in exploring the pro program, 
fill out that survey. I'll go ahead and post it one more time. Uh, that feedback survey, because you will get a, uh, a discount for the program as well. Um, before we wrap up, that's all I got for you guys today. Um, is there any questions that I can help answer before we close out? You've been awesome. I really appreciate all of your participation. It's so great when, when we're able to interact and answer questions and, um, you know, even just hear your insights, right? I know now some of you are interested in UX design. I know a little bit about your background and, um, you know, it's really exciting to be able to, uh, you know, to connect with you guys and, uh, hopefully provide some information that you're looking to learn. But before we close out, uh, I'm going to give you guys another minute or two. Feel free to write any questions you have in there. Um, and I'll, I'll hang tight for a little bit. And then if not, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll end the session. All right. Looks like no more questions. All right. So then we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Um, a, a, again, I appreciate your participation. Uh, if any questions come up, you can go ahead and email us or you can go ahead and schedule that call. We're more than happy to help you out. But thank you all so much for joining. I hope you, 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 um, you know, come away knowing that you can achieve that tech role. You can transition into tech in under a year. It's absolutely possible. So thank you again. I hope you have a great rest of your, your day, rest of your night. Uh, and we look forward to connecting with you guys in the future. Take care.